Okay, first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the instruction sheet and I'm gonna walk you through step by step of what I did and why I did it. Now, if you have the time, it is worth reading through all this. It won't hurt. We have two versions, 106th Panther Brigade and 17th Panther Division differences. The four steel return rollers here versus the three. Actually, those are not return rollers, but they're wheels, but anyhow, they're turning the tracks. Now the hull is, uh, the lower part is 1994 tooling and you can see it in the engravement down here once you start building the kit. Nothing bad, even though it is simplistic. Then on here, something interesting, there are pins on the, those are the return, roller, ro return rollers, I'm sorry. And if you plan to use aftermarket tracks, this should be removed. Those here I will show you later in the video. They hold the tracks that Tamiya provided, which are actually exceptional. Here's something very clever. The bogies are E26 and E25. Now, if you use... Uh, 25 on the other side, it won't work, but if you're like me and you're distracted or rushing through some kits, in this exact fifth step I did what I just said and I tried to put E25 on the other end. Cleverly, Tamiya put two holes with different sizes and if you're an idiot like me, you won't be able to Put the wrong item on the wrong side, which is wonderful. Now this step is not marked as finished on purpose. It's because I am not sure I'm gonna install these exact wheels because they are lacking the markings on the side, which are not overly important, but there are two ways to approach this. You can use these for the real suspension and for the spares which are on the back on the the vehicle itself you I suggest to use aftermarket part. Now pretty much everything is a breeze. Now for this here E23 should be installed first if you ask me because once you put this here the space gets limited, so you better follow this. It doesn't really matter which one will you will install first, so go for E23 first and the back of the lower part of the hull. Tracks again not marked as completed, and they are not marked as completed because uh, I haven't glued the upper part to the lower part. My plan is to prep those, glue those parts here and then paint them. Once I am finished painting and weathering, I will leave them for the last possible moment because the fit, as you will see in a moment, is pretty neat and tight and it won't be a problem to delay the attaching of this part to the upper part of the hull. Step 11, here I would suggest some thinning of the elements, but not necessarily. It will look slightly better. Here, there is also uh, guidance from Tamiya. First this, and this, you see the arrows, twisting of the element and so on and so forth. However, I would start with these two. Those are the spare wheel holders. And I believe those should be installed first, even though it's tricky to operate the B3 part because those are pretty fragile. But this is the way I would suggest to install the parts. Step 14, again, those should be installed first, not 
the rear end to the those are fenders actually it's one big part not the rear end to the fender and then B11 and B10 but first B10, B11 and then to the fenders here I had more issues than I expected I had two cracks pretty much on the same area and I suppose that was due to the probably my bad plastic maybe not all the kits are like that but mine I guess it was because here I got a crack here I got a crack and I glued those two this one worked this one didn't because here I had to drill a hole in this thing here you'll see in a bit and it didn't work because it cracked again on a very different place although very close to the original crack so I'm guessing the elastification uh, chemistry that they put uh, in the plastic didn't make its way all the way to this handle this should be thinned down this step is also marked as not complete because those I'll, you will see in a minute are not installed they are not installed because I am still considering replacing those with aftermarket parts there are reasons for that the seam line is missing here they don't look actually they do look in scale but a bit thicker than needed read carefully here the not cement shaded area you, know? you gotta be Adam Mann mentioned that he had uh, some rush through mistakes so to say and I did my share of her too however uh, we did our mistakes at different uh, points of the build and I assume that we did those mistakes because we didn't pay enough attention Tamiya are pretty straightforward kits they're brilliant they go uh, well together as a breeze however you need to be focused and read through the instruction sheet carefully everything they plan for you just need to be focused now this is aftermarket part this is a part uh, from kit 12660 and this is um, actually from Yacht Panzer 4 the first one they released I think back in 2014 a brilliant kit and those are hard to to find in the stores lately I don't know why but apparently the gun barrel included in this kit was good enough so I used that instead now here you might want to pick uh, alternate met method this one is plastic and it's tricky to be attached it's either loose or too tight so I would suggest to if you want to be professional so to speak uh, drill through it it's already prepped there are holes on the inner sides of the part E1 and you can put the metal rod instead of the plastic and this goes for the hatches as well however this hatch as uh, seen here should be uh, tilted backwards not vertical because if the vehicle stops the commander here will get it and will get it very hard this is heavy very heavy this here I marked not completed because it's not there and what I mean by that is not there because I haven't installed that because this part as you will see is not glued yet here again not glued I glued those two attachment points not the third one because the wrenches here interfere with the decals 
in my case probably masks anyhow um, this these two interfere and I will install them after I paint the surface and we'll see how it will go however this you cannot tell but it's not glued it's very flexible so it will work here spare tracks this this end here made me some headaches because it kept disassembling I glued it it unglued itself for whatever reason just to annoy me I have no idea now from here on those are the Schurzen holders. The Schurzen are brilliant. I tried to glue one and it went perfectly. It's very clever. However, I don't like the appearance of the photo wedge. The photo wedge is a bit thickish and chunkier than needed. However, the problem here I see, potential problem of course, is that the rod has cutaways and those cutaways if you use aftermarket might not fit then on as you can see I decided to to install this guy just for the sake of I hate guys in, in my models as you probably know however this won't be happening because the hatch here is not tilted backwards and it's unnatural as you can see the periscope here if the vehicle stops rapidly this will probably snap his back and kill the guy now there are nice ideas here how to install everything in order like D to F so on and so forth typical to me and wonderful and now I'll show you the kit to get an idea what are we dealing with exactly. Okay, there's the kit. Movable parts, thanks to the poly caps inside. As I told you, it looks brilliant here. The part not glued, but you can't tell. Anyhow, this should be tilted backwards as I said, that's why it will remain closed. This probably too. And this is unglued because it needs to be painted from the inside. Interestingly, let's try to show you, this is unglued too. And this is because of the tracks that I told you about. Let me focus. I'm out of focus. This part here gave me some headaches because this guy here kept ungluing itself for whatever reason. What I mentioned is I don't know if you can see that. Let me try again. It focused 1994 Tamiya, which is old, but it's great actually. Now let's put this guy back together. You see the distinctive click, and the fit is perfect. As you might expect the headlight here the base is not installed this is the base and it's not installed only because I will put a wire to connect it just like Panzermeister did with his Dragon kit however my wire is missing and I cannot find it right now so it will wait anyhow now what I don't like I don't like the fact that the these here the periscope holders are way too thick. They should be exchanged for photo etch if you want to make it look proper. As you can see, this here 
should be either thin down or it looks kind of chunkier which is the main complaint about the Mia kits the old and chunky and stuff like that which is not exactly true because there is no absolutes those here those holders brackets whatever they are they are six on two of the sides two at the back and two at the front so ten in total they should be made from photo etch if you want to be scale accurate here the part that holds the front end of the shorts in is not drilled as you can see it's clearly visible and this is a bit annoying and this is one of the reasons uh, that make me decide to not use the for the moment actually to not use the original shirts because I might consider thinning this down but some parts like this plate here which is movable as I showed should be thinner with Dragon this is photo edge it can be thinned down of course uh, but this is aligned with the rest as you can see unfortunately this is one of the chunkiest parts of the whole kit okay what else I don't like the holders here those three holders of the spare tracks as you can see they are thick those made from photo edge will be almost perfect but not photo edge like a type of mini art photo edge which is way too thin it should be thicker now because I will install spare tracks here this doesn't matter same thing goes for the front end here the front end here here this this uh, here up here and on the other side as you can see this and this should be made from photo edge if you don't use spare track if you use spare tracks you can rust them weather them whatever and it won't be an issue whatsoever with the thickness of the material uh, something else uh, some people complain about the texture of the Tamiya kits there is perfectly fine texture here and I discovered it while passing through my uh, kit which was curing and somehow the sunlight hit it from a, an angle weird angle and showed the brilliance of the Tamiya engineering and texture now this is uh, this, this happened by accident nevertheless it is there it is actually on the proper places you can add more exaggerated but here those hooks will be eventually hidden if you're not careful applying texture over them and I would suggest to leave it as it is now those hatches cannot be made open which is again something that people might try and complain about this is only close to however this is the Mia and it's simple and straightforward kit now another reason why I left the upper part and the lower part unglued here you might add some additional paint inside because here the sun when the sun hits from here you can see it from down here now this can be uh, covered with styrene plastic whatever I don't know spare plastic something to cover it up or paint it completely black and this will trick the eye into thinking that it is closed and something is inside now let's take a look at the engine compartment the engine compartment itself is wonderful now people again complain those handles are too thick the tools are so on and so forth you know but it's not true it's wonderful everything is perfectly fine and in scale now the only complaint that I have if 
this is a complaint at all. It's the fact that you have to drill through the brackets because the brackets are molded into one piece and I had to drill through them to make them more realistic, which in the end ended with a little disaster. And let me show. Now this Okay, let's write like that. This here, uh, this part snapped, and this is the defect that I showed you with the crack. The upper is the bracket that I drilled, and the lower is something that I scratch built, but I'll get rid of this altogether because I don't like the result. It's chunkier than needed, and I don't have the exact photo edge needed, but I have spare parts from my mini art kits, of which I have plenty. And I think that will do the job, or you can always put some extra stuff here, which Germans did throughout the war and covered the mess, which actually this is not a mess, but it's a mishap, let's call it a mishap. Other than that, tools are perfectly fine. I haven't seen anything better on the market. People say that tools are chunkier, details are chunkier. This is not the case with this kit. The tools are perfectly in scale. They are molded nicely. <clears throat> Maybe the sole complaint might be the holders of the jack. Now, the jack holders are a bit thick, which can be improved with photo etch. However, I would suggest to improve this only if you leave those clear and without the jack. Because as it is, they're fine, it will be in different color, weathered, and probably you won't notice the, the thickness. Now, the spare wheels that I mentioned, this holds the spare wheels. However, signs are missing here. It's better to have Continental instead of having nothing. And that is why I would suggest to use aftermarket or spare parts from some other kit, even though this is okay as, as it is. Why my wheels aren't installed? My wheels aren't installed because they are loose. Okay. I'll put them in once everything is done because as you can see nothing is there to hold them. That happens with a lot of kits, it's not a problem. I'm just explaining why the kit is looking like that. The only fit issue, if this might be called an issue, is this here. Pay attention. This is almost no pressure. If you touch it with the super thin Tamiya, this will solve itself out immediately because if you wait for 20 seconds and release it, the gap won't be there. However, well, this is still removable. I have to add that uh, this I do not consider an issue because TriStar Brumbar that I built used a lot of body. Here I used only my X-Acto knife, super glue, uh, thin uh, cutters, side cutters, and two or three types of files. One will do. The kit by itself is superb. Now, the gun barrel was my concern. I planned to exchange it. Uh, I decided to use Tamiya. Tamiya was, as I said, missing from the stores that I usually use. But this, this I tried just for the, the sake of the experiment and it's, it's perfect. It uh, requires a tad of sanding here and there. Uh, maybe cleaning the seam line and, and whatnot, but it's movable, it's great, it is not overly heavy, uh, so 
no complaints whatsoever there. Now, the shorts in again, you might consider an issue. If you want to make this kit brilliant and absolutely perfect, what I would suggest is those hooks should be photo edge, no shirts in. Uh, probably if you leave some of the tools uh, not there, you might want to consider empty photo edge uh, parts, the fire extinguisher maybe, which actually is brilliant here too. Those here, if you don't put spare tracks, and that will solve it. The rest of the kit is wonderful. The kit itself has competition only in the face of Dragon. Dragon is overcomplicated, uh, probably overengineered. I've heard about three kits that are warped already, and uh, I don't know, maybe a defect, probably a production issue. Here, there are no such issues besides um, this little guy. So, this will do. The thing with the Mia is that if you want to, to build it as it is, you better follow the instructions and present it as it is presented on the box. Dragon and probably the, just for the sake of, of the, the statement here, kids like uh, Ryfield, Mini art, they present you with a lot more options to, to uh, show missing parts, damaged parts, uh, disassembled parts, and so on and so forth. Here, everything is straightforward, and you don't have a lot to work with in case you need to experiment. This is not the best kit to do because it's uh, simplistic and it's made not for the novice necessarily but for the people who want to build it straight from the box without any complications. That brings me to this part here. Now this part... Okay. This should feature... Okay, I don't know if it is in focus or not because it's hard to tell from here, but anyhow, this should feature a seam line here. This seam line can be added, but in order to look properly, I thin down the this part here. I took the X-Acto knife and with circular movements and patience, I thin it down. This is not perfectly thinned down, but it's thin down just for the sake of showing it to you. Uh, however, this is better made from photo edge. However, with proper weathering, all this should be hidden besides the seam line. The seam line should be added. And that's pretty much the issues with this kit. Now, the suspension is oversimplified as you saw in the instructions, which I adore. I adore it because I don't see wasting any more of my time anymore in my life for making suspension that will be covered in mud, dust, and all kinds of weathering stuff because this is perfect as it is. Now, I, I told you that the only competition of this kit is eventually Dragon. And it is, but this is soon to be changed by Border Model, who are about to release their own version of the uh, L70A. This is, yeah, Panzer or Panzer 70A. Their version probably will be a lot more complicated than this one but will be simpler than Dragon, which will be the best possible options. Now, the only issue with them that we might have is that they will probably make some mistakes with the accuracies of the different details and the overall accuracy of the kit, which with the Mia usually is not uh, an issue 
ever. Those are uh, replicas of the Samur Museum uh, piece. And if somebody wants to argue about accuracy, uh, it's free to go to the museum, check the original, and argue with the tank itself. Now, what I like to, about this thing is that you can keep everything apart, glue it, not glue it, whatever you decide. In my case, I will keep everything apart, paint it, and then assemble it without any worries about the uh, warping issues, uh, misalignment, misfit, and so on and so forth. As you can see, this part is missing here on the front end of the... Not, not, not that this uh, means much, but uh, it eases the job because if you want to paint the tracks properly, you need to do it separately from the tank. The Japanese style of model making, if you look at their videos or tutorials 15 years ago, was to take this kit, build it all together with everything, spray it on the top of some building with the primer and then paint it. And if the airbrush sees it, then your eye sees it and uh, the other way around. So if the airbrush is not be able to paint it, then your eye won't be able to tell the difference. And it is logical, it's a great idea, it's simplistic, it eases the job, and if you put a lot of effort into weathering, nobody will be able to tell. This is based, this kit is based on that idea, if you ask me. However, I left the tracks glued. They, they can be installed like that, by the way. It can be easily installed like that because this is uh, the track is flexible and it can be put from here to here. And this pin mark here that I told you that you have to remove if you put aftermarket tracks still gives the option. You see, I hope you see it. Still gives the option to uh, to be installed properly with the original tracks. Now. This is better than, than anything I have built in terms of fit uh, in Armor World. Uh, probably mini art fit comes close to that. However, they're over engineered, over complicated, and at some times annoying. This was built in a matter of two weeks in my spare time. It's not a necessary effort or whatever. It's just a pleasure ride, so if you want to go back to the old days and build just for fun, build this. Do not build Dragon. I don't know yet for Border. I might try it because I love this ugly vehicle. Although beats me why the Germans decided to build this instead of producing more Stuck trees, which are highly effective and proven vehicles, they decided to go big or go home, they ended up home, which was apparently a wrong decision. Nevertheless, this vehicle is, is wonderful for a collection, it deserves attention if you ask me. And I also believe that every company that produces uh, Panzer IV, like for example, Mini Art, Rifle Model, and so on, they will approach this vehicle sooner or later because uh, the platform is pretty much the same and the Yacht Panzer IV uh, L70 and the short barrel are a mandatory in any collection. If you ask me, this comes second. It might be ugly, but I love it. So, uh, about the reels. The reels, as you see, have nasty cutaways for the Tamiya shorts. Now the solution to that here, in my opinion, is for some aftermarket uh, producer to make photo edge meshes, which can be used instead of the Mia parts. Uh, set dedicated especially for this kit with all the tricks that the Mia offered, which will be brilliant because this is the only thing missing. Removing those won't be a problem. Uh, Periscopes are not transparent. Anyhow, 
maybe an option for the tilted hatch, maybe holders for the spare tracks, which can be thinned down, by the way. This, with uh, some attention and devotion, can be thinned down, and I didn't thin down mine because, as I said, I will use a spare track. But besides that, a wonderful kit. It's a brilliant kit. It's uh, fun to be built. It's uh, not time-consuming. It's not a nerve-wracking thing. It's uh, It just works. Everything that works is loved. Like... This is like an iPhone, although my main phone is not an iPhone, I have an iPhone and I can assure you that the brilliance of Apple is that it's simple and it works. So this is it. I highly recommend this kit and I would advise to build it as shown on the box with everything on it and put extra effort in weathering which will cover for the uh, small chunky problems here and there which are too uh, fixable with scratch building but if you're uh, lazy like I am just do it as it is it looks perfect I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching I will see you in the next one and maybe I'll do the border to do the comparison one once it's it gets out there because it's still it just uh, received the box art so there is time until its release see you in the next one